Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training, and I'm going to do a quick rundown on what's new in EDIUS 10.31. 10.31 was released at the start of March in 2022, and it's added a nice couple of little changes. The first one, and probably the most important for anybody that's bought a system recently, is it's got proper support for 11th and 12th generation CPUs. So I have an 11th generation CPU in this system. I just pop into the old system properties here. You can see I've got this 11700K. I've had it for about a year. The 1200 series have come out in the last couple of months. They are better and faster, and I've done a couple of systems with them, but there was a problem in that EDIUS did not get on with the QuickSync part of this processor. Now, EDIUS has been using QuickSync for ages to help encode video and, and help play back certain types of video. This is video which is using H.264 or H.265 which is a lot of the current kind of camera formats. And it's always helped to make the system perform better. Well, when they brought out the 1100 series, they changed the Intel graphics card part of the chip, which is the bit that does the quick sync. And the newer graphics card didn't work properly with EDIUS. The 12th generation uses the same kind of graphics card, so it has similar problems. Actually, it was even worse. What would happen if quick sync playback was enabled was that with certain types of footage, you bung it on the timeline and you'd scrub or you start playing it and the whole thing would just freeze up and crash. You could turn off the quick sync playback and it would be OK, but then you wouldn't have the extra acceleration. So you wouldn't be getting the most out of your processor. Now it's been fixed. So it is better with both 11th and 12th generation processors. I don't have a 12th generation one. I've made a couple of systems, but haven't been able to try it properly on those. I know it has been tested on 12th gen systems. I know on my 11th gen system, it is working OK. As it has always been with QuickSync, when you've got QuickSync in a system and you've got a decent graphics card, like I've got an NVIDIA graphics card in this system, you have one monitor on the main NVIDIA graphics card, which is your main one, which has got all your Windows menus and everything else on. And you have another monitor which is plugged into the Intel graphics card and you'll find the ports for these are up near the USB sockets and that'll generally be your second screen. That's the best way to set it up. If you don't have a screen plugged into those Intel ports, QuickSync's not going to work. So you need to have really two screens going. Once you've got that going, normally QuickSync playback's enabled and you can bring up your task manager, look at the performance and when you're playing a clip back you'll see that it's actually using a bit of the Intel graphics card here for playback. Now, in my case, it's using it because uh, that's actually doing the recording part of this video. But normally you'd see that when you're playing a hard to use file, it's like 40 or 50% being used. If that's not being used, then the quick sync isn't being used at all, which means it won't play back those kinds of files as well as it could. Now you can turn it on and it works a bit better. If you've got a 12th generation system and you've been turning it off, so that you could actually carry on working. The way to turn it back on is you come up to Settings, System Settings, Importer and Exporter, AVCHD, and you've got this little Use Hardware Decoder tick box. If that isn't there, then you haven't got your monitors set up right. I had a really weird thing recently on systems where I've got three screens where that doesn't turn up even if one of the screens is the QuickSync monitor unless I use the right drivers, the right drivers being the ones that come from the manufacturer's website rather than Intel. But as long as you've got your screen set up properly and the right drivers, you'll see that. I know it says AVCHD because that's what they first invented it with, but this is actually just H.264 footage. So it's H.264 in MP4 files and H.264 in AVCHD files. H.265 is here under HEVC. And you can see there, I've got a hardware tick box. When you haven't got your quick sync set up right, you'll actually see that tick box, but it'll be grayed out. You won't see this tick box at all if the quick sync isn't set up correctly. This one you'll see, but it's grayed out. And there you can see that is actually ticked. So I have got a hardware decoder in there and it's going to use that now to help me play back H.265 and H.264. Obviously how well it plays back will depend on your processors. One thing about the new graphics cards is they're better at doing the newer formats, particularly H.265. Whereas if you've got a processor from four or five years ago, it might not help you even play back 4K footage because it only accelerates HD. But that will make sure it's actually enabled. I'm going to bring up the task manager. Um, I'm in Windows 11 here. Always used to bring up the task manager by just right clicking in a blank space and choosing task manager and it's not there. I mean, you can do control or delete, of course, but you can actually get to the task manager by going to the windows button, right clicking on it and choosing task manager. I've never done that before, but it was in windows 10. I could always get at it from there. And there's some interesting other stuff in here. I never really looked at like you can get to the device manager, but yeah, windows 11, that's how I get to the task manager these days. Right click on the windows button. 
task manager. So I can pull up this thing. I can look at my Intel graphics card, press the play button, and yep, you can see there, it's now using, what, 51% of my Intel graphics card. This will never go up to 100%. I've seen it go up to about 50 or 60 tops, probably settles around about 40 or 50. But if you disable it, you'll probably have actually nothing going on in there at all. You might still play your footage back, but you put a two or three layers on there, you put a whole bunch of effects on there, it'll start stuttering, which it didn't do before. Of course, now in both the Pro and Work versions, we've also got these things, which help you reduce the quality and the number of frames you're playing back, which I explained in my ADS 10.3 video. Have a look at that if you want some more information, all to help you play stuff without having to render things. So that's probably the biggest thing for people that have got those processors. If you are thinking of getting a new system, the 12th gen systems are actually really nice. Uh, another new change they've got is that they can use DDR5 RAM as well as DDR4. You have to get the right kind of system, of course, but DDR5 is a bit faster and a bit nicer. I saw quite a big increase when I was comparing my 11th gen to the 12th gen. So obviously they'd be better than 10th gen or 9th gen. Very nice new processors. Of course, there'll be a 13th gen coming along later this year, whether they'll call it 13th gen or they'll jump straight to 14th, I don't know. There'll be new ones coming out all the time, but I have to say these new ones from Intel, probably the nicest and fastest ones that I've seen for ages. Definitely very impressed with them. And I have upgraded a few systems for people, so get in touch if you're interested in doing that. Next things that we've got is it's now got proper support for GoPro Hero 10 footage. Again, this sometimes would cause EDIUS to crash. It now supports that properly. And there's some new format support for some Canon EOS and RAW lights, and they've improved performance of making MP3 files. But there are another couple of small changes to the features, which are quite nice. First one is a very simple one to do with the Grass Valley Render Engine. So with this new background render engine we had in EDIUS X, it's working all of the time. Sometimes, particularly when I've been installing things, like I've been installing extra plugins, I'll be installing the plugin and halfway through it'll say, oh, sorry, I can't install because something else is running in the background. Even if I turned EDIUS off, it might still say I can't install because the EDIUS background render service was running all the time. Now we have a little extra icon down here in the tray. So obviously in the system tray here, you've got the license manager and the job monitor, which we've had with EDIUS X for some time. But now you've got this one, the render engine. And if I click on that, you can see I can pause the render engine or start the render engine. Now that's separate to these things, which pause individual renders. This will just pause the entire thing. So now it's not doing anything in the background at all. Mainly it's there because if I was installing a plugin and it said, hang on, the render engine's still going, you could pause it, carry on installing the plugin and then turn it back on afterwards. But you could also use it just to stop this whole thing going and then it'll only start later on if you want to. But that's a nice little change they've got. You might never use it, but if you ever get a problem, particularly installing an extra plugin, you might need to pause it so you can install it. Another nice little option is to do with copying and pasting attributes. Now we have the ability to copy and paste attributes added in 10.3. They've added another couple of options to that as well. Now what you can do is if I choose to say copy those attributes over to this clip, we've now got the gain and the offset and the channel are now included, which weren't there before. What are they? The gain is if you right click on the clip, go to the properties and you change this. So I made that a bit louder. You could do the rubber band before, but you couldn't do the gain, which now you can. The channels is this. So at the moment I've got both channels showing. If I chose channel one, now it's only using one channel of the audio. That didn't go before. And the offset is something I very, very rarely use. But what the offset lets you do is imagine you've got a clip there with a bit of video and a bit of audio, and the audio is slightly out of sync, but it's not one whole frame out of sync. So you can't just select the audio and move it one frame. You've got to move it a bit of a frame. That's what the audio offset is. So right click, go to audio offset, and I can move it by either a certain number of seconds or a certain number of samples. So look at that, I've got 48,000 samples and I'm moving it by 30 samples or 49 samples. Being moved slightly now. So in my case, that'll put it out of sync. It was in sync in the first place. But that's what's been added. I can now take that information and pop it onto this clip. So if I just copy it, right click, paste attributes, and I'm gonna choose the offset, the gain, and the channel was already ticked. Choose to replace stuff. Bosch, now that's gone on there, it's put it onto one channel, it's put it onto 49 samples, and so on. Another nice little tick box is to do with, say, a black magic card. So if I come up to the hardware settings here, settings, system settings, hardware preview device, and you can see I've got my black magic gizmo here, which I can turn on. 
The new little tick box we've got is this one. Release device when EDIUS is inactive. That wasn't there before. I'm going to tick it. What it means is that if I minimize EDIUS, and then after I go off and use another program like Premiere or Resolve, then Premiere, Resolve, or After Effects, they can all use the Black Magic gizmo, which is inside of my computer. Without that tick box, if EDIUS was running, it would hog the Black Magic and nothing else could use it. Now that you've got that tick box, you can keep EDIUS open and use other programs. Of course, you could have always just turned EDIUS off and then opened the other program, it wouldn't be any problem. But now you can keep EDIUS open. And it's particularly useful if you're doing some compositing in After Effects, which you want to use on the EDIUS timeline, where you can pop into After Effects, use the black magic in that, and then make the thing and bring it back into EDIUS, all without shutting EDIUS down. So, nice little tick box. Incidentally, that tick box doesn't work in a couple of occasions. If the timeline itself is playing, or if you're capturing stuff, then you go to another program, it won't release the output. You have to be not doing anything in EDIUS before it releases the output. Another nice little thing that is up here, display days. If you're looking at the job monitor inside of EDIUS, you could also always just say current project or all projects, but now you can trim it down so it only shows projects from one day ago or two days or three days or four days. You notice as I'm changing that, I'm not seeing anything until here, which was the last time I did something inside of EDIUS three days ago. It's also in the external job monitor, which you can see here. But a nice thing, it just trims down the list so you can only see current stuff if you want to. If it's set to naught, it shows everything. Obviously, you've got your job types thing here, which we've always had. This sent from this PC option, which you wouldn't have had before, that one is there to do with a network environment. So most people probably won't have anything to do with that because they'll only have the one PC. They won't be sending off to a central network hub environment. That's what that's all about. Another new thing, which isn't really a feature that's come in with EDIUS X 10.31, is that you can now get EDIUS on subscription as well as on a permanent license. So obviously you've been able to get things like Adobe and Avid and Vegas on subscription. You haven't been able to do that with EDIUS. Of course, this is, I know, one of the reasons sometimes people stick with EDIUS, because you don't have to pay for the blooming thing monthly. You can just pay a one-off fee and never have to pay again if you don't want to. And I like that. That's not going anywhere. They're actually putting out the subscription for people who want a subscription. And you might say to yourself, why on earth do I want to have the option of always having to pay for my software rather than just buying it outright? It's because it's cheaper in the first place. And for some businesses, it's a better way of actually dealing with the cost of software is to spread it out monthly. It's easier to put it in the budgets that way. Also, you can just rent it for a month or two if you want to. You don't have to rent it forever. So if you need a couple of extra licenses for a month, you can do that. So it's there as an option, but it is not going to replace the permanent license. They're not trying to drive people that way. So for example, if you buy Avid, you get more stuff if you get the subscription. If you go subscription on Edius, you actually get less stuff. So if you're going for the subscription, you don't get any of the third party software, which is the audio effects, fighter scene, that kind of thing. The new blue titler. You don't get any of that. You can't make DVDs or Blu-ray discs. The machine has to be on the internet all of the time. Even if you get the work group version on subscription, it has to be on the internet all of the time. So actually there are advantages to buying the permanent license and the permanent license isn't going anywhere. It's just the subscription is there for people that want to go on subscription and buy it monthly. I mean, I could imagine some of my customers might actually want to rent it for a couple of months if they need a few extra seats for a particular job. If you want to get the subscription, you have to buy it currently directly from the Grass Valley store. You can't get it through me. May, may or may not change. But you have to go directly to the Grass Valley store and order it from them. So go on there. I've got a link on my web pages. Just go to my website, www.dvctraining.co.uk if you want to find out a bit more about buying it on subscription. That's a nice little roundup of everything that was new in EDIUS 10.3. Obviously, there'll be more coming along in future versions. I'll do more videos when they come out. Hope you found this information really useful. I've been promising for ages that my new version of my tutorial, the EDIUS X version, will be available. And it now is available on my website. So if you want the update, please go there. There's full details of everything that's new inside of it. And then you can order and download the tutorial. There's more stuff in it because it does cover both EDIUS 9 and EDIUS X. It does tell you which ones are only in X and which ones are only in 9. So there's a bit more stuff in it. So it is a fairly big download, but price hasn't changed. And you can go on there, you can upgrade from the old version, or you can buy it outright. So please pop to my website for more information. Apart from that, uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And I'll see you next time.